Is it a cinematic sensation? Is it a masterpiece of animation? Or a terrible train wreck, the jamboree key check? If a movie needs an exorcism, he'll smite the demon with criticism. If it deserves attention, he'll give it a heartfelt mention. A strawberry rating, one, two, five. Howdy folks, Jamboriki here. I've reviewed many Raymond Briggs adaptations before on this channel. Father Christmas, The Snowman, and When the Wind Blows. I think it's time that I did another one. Based on the real lives of Raymond's own parents, this is Ethel and Ernest. In this film, we follow the lives of Ethel and Ernest, two Londoners who are raising a little boy called Raymond. So, this movie doesn't follow your typical beginning, middle and end story, it's more of a slice of life structure. Personally, slice of life is honestly one of my favourite genres. However, I only enjoy this kind of storytelling when it's done right. I need to actually care about these people or I can't get invested in their successes, tragedies or relationships. Luckily, Ethel and Ernest stars a wonderful cast of charming, rounded and interesting characters that stole my heart. Despite how mundane their activities are, I remained engaged in how they spent each and every day because I became so attached to their personalities. I wanted them to survive through the war, I eagerly hoped that they would excel in their careers and education, and I shared their personal moments like they were my own family. Heck, many of these characters reminded me of my own relatives. They are that realistic and relatable. To compensate for the lack of traditional narrative, the film uniquely progresses through time itself. We watch Ethel and Ernest experiencing society through many decades. In this time, we learn about their political opinions, see them interacting with new, modern technology for the first time, watch them responding to historical moments, and witness their reactions to seeing their son become a product of a new generation. There's something adorable about watching this old-fashioned, naive couple growing accustomed to the rapidly evolving times. I also like how this film embraces its overall mood and tone. It's a very relaxing and atmospheric movie. There's a lovely quaint sincerity to its intentions. Sure, the characters go through some pretty overwhelming situations, but the film doesn't melodramatise these moments or escalate them into something over the top. It remains down to earth, trusting that we'll enjoy the simple realism and honest truths of these events. The film is far from anything pretentious and knows that its strength lies in what it is. But the centre of this movie, its very heart and soul, is the relationship between Ethel and Ernest. Everything about these two as a couple is adorable, from the innocent way they meet to their very first date. They convey a sweet romance that I actually believed in, and it's the authenticity of their love that kept me interested in their lives. Sure, once they get married, there's arguments and tiffs, but that's normal, and we can always tell that they genuinely love each other deep down. These two have very polarising personalities, yet they click so well, and they do their best to get along. I'm going to give five points to the content. Ethel is a very serious, sensitive and conservative woman. She can take things to heart very easily, but there's something beautiful about how emotionally open and honest she is. She wears her feelings on her sleeves and isn't afraid to cry when she's upset about something small. But she still has enough backbone to speak her mind and stand up for herself. She can be judgmental and critical, but only because she cares about her loved ones deeply and wants the best for them. Ernest is much more free-spirited and upbeat than his wife. Unlike Ethel, he embraces his working-class identity and feels a patriotic pride towards his roots. He's also more involved with politics and adapts to the times quicker. I do really love his cheery optimism and the way he gets excited about newfangled things. We can tell that his wife irritates him sometimes, but when he sees her crying, he'll launch into comforting mode because he cares about her so much. Raymond is a very energetic kid and you can see his parents' influences in him. He can be sensitive like his mum, but he's also got his dad's passionate enthusiasm. He gets less screen time than his parents because he's often away somewhere else, from evacuating to the countryside during the war to attending a few years at art college. 
In spite of this though, we do get an impression of who he is as he grows up. I'm going to give five points to the characters. The animation for this movie was done through digital drawing software. Even though it's being drawn on computers, the film still retains the handcrafted touch of Raymond Briggs drawings. It's a very colourful looking art style with very soft tender features which adds to the lovely atmosphere of the movie, but the palette does become muted for more sombre scenes. The character animation is very fluid, and you can tell that the artists have paid special care towards every frame. Their personalities are also magnificently vivid too, whether it's Ethel's shyness or earnest cheery nature. The characters gain a lot of their charm from the delightful movement they're given by the animators. I'm going to give 5 points to the animation. Brenda Bleffen voices Ethel. She sounds very soft-spoken and shy, but when her character needs to show some backbone, she knocks it out of the park. I don't like leaving them. They're so helpless. They can't do a thing for themselves. Hmm. Serve them right. Bloated plutocrats. There's no need to swear, Ernest. What? Don't worry about them. They'll soon get another skivvy. I was not a skivvy. I was a lady's maid. And what's more, I'm going to be married. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Broadbent voices Ernest. I love how wonderfully jolly he sounds in the role. Wait a bit, Ed. Don't want the nappies in the picture. That's it. Oh dear. I don't have to tell you to smile. <laughs> However, there are parts in the film where his character is required to show some sadness, and you can really hear some authentic tears when he performs those lines. Here, let me get your boots off. There. Loads of dead. Little kitty. All in bits. I had to. Oh, there, there. Have a good cry. <laughs> Lucas Treadaway, Harry Collette, and MacReady Massey all voice the different ages of Raymond. They all do fantastic jobs of whatever age they're supposed to be playing. Whether it's the youthful energy of a child, the moody adolescence of a teenager, or the mature sensitivity of an adult. Look, he's come up. What's that, son? A pear tree. Auntie Flo gave me the pig from a pear we ate. Dad, when you come home from work, why don't you wash in the bathroom? <laughs> Blimey, son, I'm filthy, look. Yes, I know, but that's what the bathroom is for. No, I couldn't wash in the bathroom. Not in this state. But this is the kitchen, Dad. Mum cooks in here. Ooh. No, I couldn't, son, not in the bathroom. Oh, Dad. I thought you'd like, um... Oh, thank you, dear. <laughs> Whatever is it? It's a bottle of wine, Mum. Wine? Oh dear, I don't know. Got a corkscrew um, anywhere? Wine? Oh dear. It's all right, Mum. It won't explode. I don't like bangs. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm going to give five points to the voice acting. There's an endearing innocence to the music by Carl Davis for this movie. The music gorgeously reflects the naivety and vulnerability of these sweet characters so perfectly. It's a score that boosts the emotions of the film really well too. The scenes of happiness are made even cheerier by the upbeat brass instruments, and the sad moments are bleakened by the sorrowful orchestral cues. But the best thing about this movie's music score to me is how it fantastically adapts to the time periods. One moment we're listening to relaxing classical music, then BAM! Years have passed and we can now hear swinging jazz. I really respect composers who can be this versatile for the benefit of a movie's narrative progression. I also admired how the film doesn't let the music dominate the soundtrack, letting the quiet atmosphere speak for itself at parts. That's really humble of the composer. The end credits also features an original song by Paul McCartney called In the Blink of an Eye, which movingly captures the whole essence of the movie's themes of romance and mortality. Interestingly too, the film features a cover of a song by Paul's father. It's a really nice sentiment, and his father's song actually fits in with the film's world. I'm going to give five points to the music. 
To conclude, Ethelon Ernest is a beautiful, lovely and adorable movie. It's unapologetically British, and you can tell that everyone who made it is a huge fan of Raymond Briggs' work. I smiled all the way through this movie. It's that easy to fall in love with it. Nowadays, it is very difficult for my country to fund and produce feature-length animated films, so I do encourage you to go out and watch this movie, not only because you're going to be supporting my country's animation industry, but because you're going to be enjoying a really fantastic movie too. Ethel and Ernest has gained 25 points, which translates to 5 ration strawberries out of 5. If you enjoyed such films as The Wind Rises and When the Wind Blows, I think you'll really like Ethel and Ernest. I'd also like to point out that the original graphics for this video were produced by Toongrin. If you'd like to request a commission from them, their website is up on screen now. I've been Jambariki and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, then feel free to subscribe to my channel because I make a lot of videos quite like this one. Also, please consider supporting me by making a monthly pledge to my Patreon in return for amazing rewards. A huge thank you to my newest patron, Justin Kennan. You are awesome! So, what am I going to be reviewing in the next episode of Jabariki Reviews? Well, here's the thing. It's going to be episode 150 next! Now, I'm going to be letting you decide the 150th episode. However, this is actually going to be the last time that I'll be holding a fan poll for an episode of Jamboreeki Reviews. I'll still be holding polls on my channel in general, but not anymore for this show, I'm afraid. I've narrowed down which specific films I'd love to do for a 150th episode, and they turned out to be just two. These two films are Hey Arnold the Jungle Movie, or It's Such a Beautiful Day. The link to the poll is in the description box below. Very excited to find out what I'll be doing for the 150th episode of this show. Cheerio, folks.